Ben Mankiewicz, Christy Lemire, Alonzo Duralde, Matt Achety, Katy Perry, I don't even know what the real title is. Katy Perry colon, colon. part of me. Wait, Katy, Katy Perry, Perry colon. colon. Part of her is her colon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, this, was a, this was a surprise. We wore these glasses, by the way, to watch the movie. I mean, they're very stylish and all. But they're I'm, also, I'm bringing they're also mine unrelated. to the next real D movie that I, I think, think you have to do. They're very cute. You have to cute. do the intro with it. Oh, uh, that's the point. Lolita. All right, I know. <laughs> where's, where's my uh, our lollipop? Okay, so Katy Perry is a girl from a small town with a guitar and a dream. Um, <laughs> actually, her backstory <laughs> is much more interesting than this. I was really surprised at how good this is. That was good. Is that, is that your uh, David Caruso thing? Yeah, it's my David Caruso. Yeah! yeah. 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 Robert yeah. Stack. Yeah. 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 Um, no, but, you know, there are so many films like this. There's a Justin Bieber movie, there's a Joe's Brothers movie, there was a uh, Miley Cyrus movie. Uh, the Celine Dion right. one. And, and yes, a lot of it is packaging and a lot of it is, um, V repetitive stuff with fans saying, oh, Katie gave me the hope to be myself and it's okay to be weird and it's okay to be different. But then you have the surprising substance that I did not expect. Yeah, I, that's right. The mo relating to, to, to the breakup of the marriage with right. Russell Crowe. And Russell obviously, but I, I th said it last time, <laughs> and I've continued to say it today. Well, Russell she broke up with him because right. right. he was throwing phones at him. Russell, <laughs> Russell Long. Right. Um, the uh, other thing that I have with this movie is that you do not get a single song in its entirety uninterrupted. Do you want an entire Katy Perry song? Well, yeah, if you go to see a Katy Perry concert movie, yes. I mean, I don't want Stop Making Sense where it's just, the, you know, but I, one fucking song with like all the verses and all the choruses and no interrupting with interviews and backstage shenanigans or whatever. Yeah, it's like, is that too much to ask for a concert movie that we have enough attention to pay for to one song? I Any bet. one song? How long could her songs though? possibly be? Right, they're all three minutes long. Yeah. Uh, although, I bet when the DVD comes out, you'll get entire But I, that's the... So you I, can have that. No, I want it now. <laughs> yeah. Too much uh, Too much color. Too many Too many colors. That's for stick. I know, but enough. Enough. Number too uh, many colors. <laughs> 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 too many notes. You want the black and white. Too many notes. You want the Emar Bergman version? Of Katie <laughs> You're <laughs> totally yeah. <laughs> Clearly, I like it. Dark Lady. Yes. I gave it an eight. You gave it an eight. Uh, sorry, I'm fiving it on this one. Seven point eight. Mm. I also gave it a seven point eight. Uh, <laughs> a lot but it, was the but it would have been a, it would have been an eight point five or a nine uh, last night. So if when we review it again next week, I could be at like 6.9. Okay. <laughs> we would have liked it if we'd been right. drinking. Central crisis here for Christian Bale. Which boutique hotel should I romp around in with scantily clad model slash actress types who want to I didn't me? even know he was a writer. Oh, he's on set talking about like plot points and stuff, is he not? To be, to be fair, to be fair, it's, <laughs> a, it's in the press notes, but if you watch the movie, you would have a tough time yeah, sussing I didn't look at, yeah, I didn't yeah. know what he was. Maybe yeah. a producer. I thought, yeah, I thought, I mean, I, I got, I thought mostly he was just a, a you know, a, a wealthy Hollywood, Hollywoodian, mm -hmm. Hollywoodian, Hollywoodian. A dilettante. Yeah. <laughs> is that how you pronounce Hollywood? That's a, and yeah. and there do um, well, dilettante. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say, man, because, <laughs> You know, look, I, the problem with me and Terrence Malick, and I'm sure <laughs> Terrence Malick considers it a problem, um, is that I, his movies make me feel dumb. They make me feel inadequate. They make me feel like I'm not smart enough to understand it. And I get it. I, I'm not, there are a lot of people who are way smarter than I am. But I don't think I should be this baffled, feel this <laughs> Left out. Maybe I am. He means to baffle you. I believe he means it for it to be like ethereal and. Okay, but then, but I don't feel. I just I feel anxiety by my bafflement. Okay. I feel like, oh, stop being me. I got it. You're, I, look, I get it. You are smarter than I am, and he is. And, you know, and and obviously more artistic. But I also, as you know, from all the conversations we've had, no matter how beautiful your movie is, it's meaningless to me unless you say something interesting. 100% meaningless. I can't even bring myself to say, yeah, I guess it looked nice because I don't even, it doesn't even register. You know, I was like determined not to get into the moment where I tell Paris Malik what's Or mean. Emmanuel Lebesky. Or Emmanuel Lebesky. Who shot it. it. No, so and I get it. It's course, beautiful, yeah. but that does not resonate with me. And that's where I started with it, that I'm going to get like, that's my weakness. I get it. It was cool. Like, I'd watch it. And I'd be like, 
whoever I do this review with, they're going to tell me how beautiful it is. And they're going to be right, <laughs> and I'm not going to feel it, but they're going to be right, yeah. right, right. No, I, I, no, I get it. But I mean, yeah. only what? How many? Three, right? Yeah. Three in a row. Three in a row. <laughs> no big deal. When you win five in a row, then <laughs> maybe I'll develop me, some right. respect. Right. It is. It's a pretty good LA movie, though, and, and yeah, I being agree. from yeah. LA. <sighs> It's exactly what you think it's going to be. It really is. But that is, that's not good. No, no, that's it's, not, it's good. not. And it's, the, yeah. It's weird because, you know, in looking back and trying to remember the last time I thought any of these Marlon Wayans spoofs were funny, I had to go back to the first scary movie. Right. And there's been how many of those now? Like four? Like five, five, I think. Yeah. And weirdly enough, not only is Marlon Wayans a credited writer on Scary Movie, but so are Seltzer and Friedberg. Actual people. Yeah, the, the, the guys who gave us date movie and epic movie and Meet yes. the Spartans and all that yes. that whole shit. It's show. a motif, right? So there are multiple scary movie movies. There are multiple haunted house movies. Yes. Now they're doing Fifty Shades of Grey, which is like the lowest of the low hanging fruit. Well, exactly. Like it's a movie that kind of isn't taking itself entirely seriously in the first place. It's like either be an actual satire and have a point of view and a commentary about why you're making fun of this material, or at least. If you're just gonna end it with a <laughs> fart joke, make it a funny fart joke. It's just, there's these things, that I, I, the, I spent the whole movie going, I, I guess that's a joke. <laughs> that's a joke. That might be a joke. <laughs> right, so here's my, my weird contrarian view on Fifty Shades of Black. Wow. Well, you had one on Fifty Shades of Grey, so no, you might as well be I, consistent. I here. do, yes. <laughs> I've read the books, I do my homework. So, um, I feel like they're actually trying to get to something of substance here. Go on. And she starts to whip him, right? Mm -hmm. And she says, this is for Kerry Washington and Django Unchained. And this is for Lupita Nyong'o and 12 Years a Slave. And I feel like somewhere in here, they have a nugget of idea of trying to explore the fetishization of slavery in award season films, <laughs> under the guise of art, and trying to compare it to like the titillation or the thrills that you might experience in a movie like Fifty Shades of Grey. I, I don't, I'm not saying they're doing it with finesse or smart, but I believe there's a nugget of an idea there that might be provocative. Uh, you are being super generous. No, I think, I, I I think they backed into that one by accident, <laughs> if anything. Really? No, because because this movie drops cultural references with it, but never makes them funny. Like, um, so like Christy, SOS, Mateo, or oh, yeah. Machete. Machete hoy. <laughs> Senorita Gray. Graysita. Si. You want to be Graysita? <laughs> y, um, y Alonso. You already have Alonso. Spanish names. Alonso. 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 Um, vamos a hablar hoy de um, Casa de mi Padre, un película, una película con Will Ferrell en que él habla completamente en español. Y no es perfecto y es parte del chiste. Sí. sí. Okay. Will Ferrell es el hijo de un ranchero y su hermano viene a casa con la mujer a, a quien él piensa casarse, pero resulta que el hermano es un narcotraficante. <laughs> the joke is, is that this is meant to be what? A very loving parody of telenovelas yeah. and spaghetti westerns yeah. and his really obvious continuity errors yeah, and, and shitty, shitty production values. Yeah. Is it funny? They do a good job at knowing what a telenovela is, mm -hmm. and that's it. No me gusta. <laughs> <laughs> she is the hot chicken man in a She's the one good she thing in the, that movie. She yeah. is the, okay. yeah, the girlfriend who, who gets down to her little lacy thong to, to shimmy into the air conditioner. And uh, she's good. Uh, and Matt like taking a break from Angry right. Birds. Uh, Matt's playing Angry Birds. Uh, Thank uh, you for joining us. I have to us. say, I, I didn't see the movie, so I'm playing the new Angry Birds, which is pretty cool. Is it better than Casa de Mi Padre? Yes, I don't probably. even know. Like, probably, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, but they are cute little tricks. Like they know it's a movie, and they know that we know it's a movie, and yeah. so they zoom in on the on some guy's sunglasses. You can see the reflection of the, of the camera, camera crew, yeah. and some like grip eating a sandwich in the background or whatever. <laughs> there, there's it, a yes. dinner scene where people keep changing seats, and one yes. of the people is a mannequin. I mean, just like <laughs> goofy stuff like that. It is so thin that it made me start to notice stuff like. Could we start casting Diego Luna as anything but a drug, drug dealer? dealer. <laughs> like, he's so good and he's done so little that's outside of that. Right. It's like, come on, America. Are you that dumb yeah. that you can't see his but it was, But it was great to see the two of Diego Luna and Gael Garcia okay. Bernal together again because they're, they're a fun duo. But, but like, what a sad-ass reunion yeah. that is. <laughs> also, I have to say, I do give Will Ferrell a ton of credit because he totally commits to this and absolutely yes. goes for it. And it is entirely in Spanish for him. So I have to admit that I did not hate this as much as I quite frequently hate Adam Sandler movies. I think we all look at them, we know they're coming, and we feel a sense of dread. 
right? Like, oh yes. shoot, I'm gonna go see an Adam Sandler movie. But there's a weird kind of streak in this that I can't decide whether I admire its daring or I think it's just trying too hard to, uh, to shock us. I, yeah, I, I will say that I laughed twice. What did you laugh at? I laughed at Vanilla Ice during the uh, the bachelor party montage, which was pretty funny. Vanilla Ice is like a full-fledged character in this movie. Yes. yes. As himself. As himself. Beyond and, I, I, and I laughed at the visit with the mom in prison at the mm -hmm. end of the movie, which is two more times than I laughed at um, Just Go With It and Jack and Jill and uh, Zookeeper Buck, and put Bucky together. Larson. And Bucky Larson. Bucky Larson, yes. So, uh, although actually, now that I think about it, I did laugh at Al Pacino and Jack and Jill, yes. so maybe we're tied. Anyway. <laughs> I think that's more out of horror than anything. Uh, uh, no, he was, he, was, he, he was working it. But yeah, no, this movie is painful, 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 and I disagree. And I, I just, yeah, <laughs> it, it is, it is, it's sexist, it's vaguely racist and, you know, misogynist. And And it, there's a homophobic streak in it, it too. It has, yeah, a little bit, you As know. As usual, yeah. Oh, yeah, movies. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is, it, it is such that frat boy mentality of everybody who is not me is gross and fair game for being laughed at by how revolting they are. And probably gay. And probably gay. <laughs> yeah, you know, and so it's like, I, I don't think it's great. I, you know, it does mess some things up, for instance, if you're gonna do a montage of a 13 year old, you know, having trysts with a teacher and you're playing a Van Halen song, yeah. why would you not play the Van Halen song? Well, as we talked Come about- Come on! Wait, they we played, they played Hot for Teacher. No, they did not. What did they play? No! I don't remember, what did they play? Uh, okay. I, as you can see, I'm very upset. I can see, what did they uh, It was some other song. Well. It was not Hot for Teacher and I was really pissed off. As you can see, that really Clearly. pissed me off. You and put people... more thought into this than the people who made this movie. <laughs> I know. No, I, it was like, come on, what, really? It is kind like, of a gimme when you think what, about what it. What the hell? Here's the deal in Jersey Boys, uh, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are married and then no. Tyler, no. she no. dies and he no. has to raise the kid no. on his own. Oh my no. God, that's no. a better no. movie actually. Uh, I would rather see that again. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, this is Clint Eastwood's uh, origin story. No. Of, <laughs> it is well, probably. it is actually. <laughs> 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 How they became uh, the Avengers. <laughs> uh, of uh, Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. And that I am in a rare position here that I never thought I would be in. As a father with a daughter. No. Um, okay, all right. No, no, what's weird is, is that, you know, and I have such a wonderful singing voice, um, <laughs> but I sing to her all the time, mm -hmm. right? Poor and, and it's always, like, two out of every three songs, I'm two-thirds of the way through, and I'm like, oh, this is... Like, afternoon delight on the rest of my album. <laughs> totally, there's always a moment of, like, right, no. Dan's dropping the humpy dance uh, on the <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna get it all out now when you're 15 months, you know what I'm saying? Because in a year, I cannot sing sure. this to you anymore. Mm -hmm. Baby got back, is right, not. Right, uh, yeah. But just in the interest of full disclosure, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want it to seem it's like a bad review this. that I'm giving it. Let's talk about this. I auditioned for this movie. Uh, <laughs> Reporter number one? I was not cast. Um, I think a, you dodged the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but I do remember at the audition, there was for, there's a moment where they're inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's a red carpet reporter. It's a nothing role. Oh, they gave it to a guy like who looked like he was 19 and with super red hair. Um, but you're but, not uh, but anyway, so the first question they ask me is, and I'm standing in front of them, and they go, how tall are you? Right? And I know it's for Clint Eastwood, right? Mm -hmm. And it's Jersey Boys, right? And uh, they go, how tall are you? And I go, tall enough? 6'4". <laughs> and she goes, 6'4", right? So wow. Like, so I was like, oh, well, they, they get me anyway. <laughs> and, then, and then I read my line and uh, never heard from them again. <laughs> I uh, think we'll all... Yeah, uh, but I'm okay. Uh, but anyway, it's not very good. It's not interesting. Lucky for us, because it would have been really uncomfortable to shit all over this movie <laughs> had you been in Ben's it. Big yeah. Place yeah, because this is no White House now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing is one of like eight endings. This movie keeps ending, and you think it was like a good spot for it to be Can over, we, and it yeah. keeps Talk going. Talk about the big number at the end. Oh. A big, well, that's, it's like a big Broadway it's a, it's a, it's a, it's wait, 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 no, wait, hang on. Call. Here's my impression of the end of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> But also, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, 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 yeah. I like it. It's the kind of thing that works. It's the kind of thing that works on Broadway. Right. Yeah, you know, I'm like it, when you go see Mamma Mia and you've endured that stupid show, and then everybody comes out at the end in the crazy outfits and sings Waterloo. You're like, okay, that was actually kind of fun. And then they do it in this movie, and it, they don't sing Waterloo. But still, you're just sort of like. Oh. But also, also, you have Christopher Walken, and you don't let him dance. I know he's a great. Dancer. I kept waiting. I'm like, this yeah, is I the whole reason for this. Be, Christopher right, Walken's gonna, gonna dance. Get a but but no. uh, you remember in uh, the. the